Climate change is forcing coastal cities everywhere to grapple with an uncertain future. Oceanside, California is no exception. It's been dealing with coastal erosion and sea level rise for decades. In the summer of 2021, Oceanside City Council voted to take action with a pilot project to stabilize its beach. The hope is that this process will buy some more time to plan for the future. Every coastline and community is different. A solution that works in one place may not be the best for another, but other coastal communities facing similar challenges can learn from this process. Known for its dynamic beaches and historic wooden pier, Oceanside is a place whose culture, economy, and environment are all centered around its coastline. Life in Oceanside is really based um, and centered around the beach. The beach and surfing and just, you know, that outdoor healthy lifestyle. We've had people come all over the world that come to Oceanside and they're very impressed with our coastline. The coastline is important because it, it provides a place for all the visitors and residents to have a place to be. People come to Oceanside for the beaches. Like any community born out of its proximity to the ocean, there are serious challenges that come with it. Oceanside has, has a shifting coastline. I mean, we've had years where we've had more sand, years where we've had less sand. Lately, maybe the past decade or so, you can really notice our coastline, our beaches really disappearing. California's beaches and bluffs are eroding at alarming rates. Rapid loss of sand is stressing the built environment and local ecosystems. And this rate of change is accelerating each year. I think there's a tendency to think these are problems for the future, but in fact, it's now, it's everywhere, it's global. When my kids were little, we used to come down here and go to the beach right here and down by Forster Street and Buccaneer and you can't go to the beach anymore around here because there's no beach. Residents in Oceanside recently gathered to bring attention to a King Tide event, which are widely considered to be very real precursors to what our coastlines may look like in the coming decades. The UN's 2021 IPCC Climate Assessment Report confirmed what's been on many of our minds. That flooding, extreme storm events, as well as cliff, bluff, and beach erosion are only going to become more frequent and more severe. So I think if we look ahead just a decade or two, we're gonna see the things we're seeing now, but more frequent. Water's gonna extend further in then and be deeper and last longer. Watching a king tide is probably a good reality check. The lifeguards do talk about coastal erosion because we have to find a safe area to access the beach when we are called on a rescue. With the erosion comes repetitive flooding. All of this together creates safety hazards, damages property and infrastructure, and impacts public beach access, which is the city's most important cultural and recreational asset. Historically, the problem has been managed using solutions that were ultimately short-lived and ineffective. In the city of Oceanside, those strategies were no longer sustainable. It was important for us to have a long-term solution because I think um, one of the challenges in the past is we've done two um, big nourishment projects, but within two to three years, most of that sand was gone. We don't have the funding necessary to make that a viable option. I mean, we really need to have a project that um, is sustainable for you know, 20, 30, 40 years. In 2021, after years of community conversation, the city decided it was necessary to act and voted to test a new pilot approach. If tied to larger urban planning strategies, this project could do more than address erosion. It could protect critical economic assets and allow for important community conversations around long-term planning. Tackling a challenge of this scope is no simple task, mainly because people just disagree on the best path forward. How we incorporate the public's view, I think you have to have that. That's the only way it's ever going to work. When we uh, received federal stimulus money, we did a survey and asked our residents what the most important issues were. And fixing our beaches was up there in the top two issues. We didn't have a specific solution in place. We were very open-minded, and we wanted to let the science dictate what our next move was. After completing a study looking at different options and listening to feedback from community members, the City Council voted to move forward with the study's recommendation. A pilot groin 
and a sand bypass system. I think Oceanside has this opportunity to put some groins in as pilot projects and monitor those. We know what they are, we know how they work. We've built groins, we build jetties, we know what happens. Each environment's a little different, but it's a pilot project. We can do this and it's not gonna be the end of the world. As far as the way the city can adapt to the future with coastal erosion is just staying ahead of the problem. If you have the next 20 years, which we can realistically look forward to, uh, preserving our beaches and growing our beaches is the best way to address sea level rise. Um, whatever that may be, it provides that buffer between infrastructure and houses uh, that we need. And it also opens up our opportunities and really lets us determine what the next step is and build off this. There is an opportunity to involve the community closely in design and placement, taking into consideration the city's existing surf breaks and creating new ones. It's important to remember these kinds of coastal infrastructure projects are just one tool that can be used in a larger toolbox of resilience efforts. Each coastline and community requires a different set of solutions. Simply put, there's no silver bullet when it comes to sea level rise. This is gonna be a challenging project. Um, the scope, it's a very large project. Um, it's gonna be very expensive. The permitting process is gonna be challenging and it's gonna take longer than we want. I mean, I think we all want sand in our beaches by tomorrow and you know, realistically, that's not gonna happen. I think anytime you, you mention hard structures on the beach, you're gonna elicit strong responses and it's valid. They have caused significant issues in the past. Hard structures like groins can have downdrift impacts, disruptions to the natural flow of sediment, which can actually increase erosion in neighboring areas. The goal for this project, however, is to introduce a new and consistent supply of sediment to benefit Oceanside as well as downcoast beaches. This project has to be a regional project, and it's critical that we partner with our neighboring cities. I do not want a project that negatively impacts any of our surrounding cities, and we need to make sure that we're working together and finding a solution that works for the entire coastline. It's a great place to run a pilot project and, and see how it works. And I can't help but think the Coastal Commission, by putting the right story forward, will understand, yeah, these have been successful in other places in California. So after our feasibility study uh, was presented and approved, we're in the next phase. So we're actually looking for proposals to permit and construct the project. It is a truly exciting milestone for the city. These kinds of studies have taken place before, but this is the first time a decision to test a new approach has made it this far. The city now has the opportunity to optimize what happens next, learning from this pilot and placing it within a holistic, long-term resilience strategy. This would not only build a more sustainable and equitable future for the city of Oceanside, but it could put it on the map as a global model. Maybe advise 10 more years or 20 more years of, of time for the people that are there now, which is a lot in many people's lifetimes.